Welcome to Land of House. I'm Seth. This is the Sun Gold Power 12 volt, 3000 watt pure sine wave power inverter with charger. I think it also has a remote on it as well. Let me go ahead and unbox this thing and we will take a look at all of its features and then test it out. And be sure to subscribe because in a future video, I will be installing this into my little off-grid tiny house so we can see it uh, power the whole place. But anyway, let's open this up and see what it's all about. Now this thing weighs right at 50 pounds. So if you're gonna be picking it up alone, just be sure to uh, keep that in mind, protect that back from getting hurt. It's not so bad walking around with it, but when you have to pick it up from the ground is when it gets to be a pain. I've used Sun Gold Power's 6,000 watt inverter and it has worked very well for my uh, off-grid solar system. So I'm excited to test out how well the 12 volt works here. With uh, oh, My other one is a 48 volt and this one's the 12 volt 3,000 watt. All right, this thing's heavy, so let me pick it up out of here real quick. When you order this inverter charger, it comes with a few things. Of course, the inverter charger itself, it has a remote switch with a very nice long cord. It also has an instruction booklet with lots of good information. It has a couple of terminal covers, which are nice to have, and then a battery temperature sensor as well. So let's go ahead and take a tour around this inverter. So on the side you can see here, it's got some cooling um, just holes in there and then it's got multiple places to mount this. This particular unit weighs right at 50 pounds and so you've got lots of different holes for mounting on both the sides. Uh, so let me go ahead and turn it this way. So you've got your negative and your positive input terminals there. Right here you've got your remote port for the uh, the remote that comes with the unit. Over here is your battery sensor. So you just plug that in right there. They're both your typical phone cord type plug. Right here, this is an auto generator start. So if your uh, power input on the other side goes down, it can automatically start a generator there. You've got this little block down here for ground a cooling fan, and then over here are several dip switches which we'll get into in just a moment. So let me kind of uh, tilt this up so you can see the top, uh, maybe. Uh, so it's got several different things here which we'll dive into a little bit more in a second, but a display, it's got the same kind of switch up here as you can get for the remote. And then there's a uh, little switch right here to uh, select the battery type for the charger. Um, and so we'll also kind of go over those things in just a bit, but it's got pretty much everything labeled up here that you're going to need. Let me drop this back down, swing it around. On this 3000 watt version of this inverter, there is an outlet. It's a ground fault, so that's nice to have. The 6000 uh, watt version did not have this plug. Up here, you've got two different uh, breakers. So one right here is the charger input protection. And then you've got the inverter output protection right there. And then under here is where you have your input and your two outputs. And then the other side is just like the uh, first one I showed you. And then on the bottom, it's just blank. So nothing special up under there. All right, let's dive into some of these features. Let's start here on the switch. So right now it's in the middle, which is the unit off. If you go down here to power saver off, it will always be ready to put an output onto either the outlet or those uh, outputs. If you click it up to the power saver auto, it's going to pulse and be looking for a load of 25 watts or higher. And uh, it's gonna do that every 30 seconds, it's going to search for that load. Um, so definitely um, saves power with the unit being on all the time. I'm anticipating hooking up the remote. So whenever I walk into a room to use this, I can then just flip that on and it won't be using power all the time. Um, so anyway, you got your um, information here. So over here, you've got a switch and that is the battery type selector. And you may not be able to read it here, but it can do a charger off on position zero, which is what I'm gonna use here first. And then it's got different battery types like uh, gel USA, AGM, lithium, 
uh, sealed lead acid gel for European, open lead acid, um, lithium iron phosphate, and then it's got um, a couple others down there as well. Here you've got some LEDs, power saver function on. You've got overload trip, over temperature trip, charger on float, charging mode, charger on fast charging mode. You've got inverter power on line, battery charger off, and you've got uh, shore power on line battery charger active. So this thing can do uh, charging of your batteries from grid power or it can uh, just be an inverter. Now on the back of the unit, you can see there is a set of five different dip switches. So number one up here is the low battery trip voltage. You can either set it to position zero, which is 10 volts, or position one, which is 10.5 volts. So either of those pretty low for a 12 volt battery. Um, so you have to be careful with that. If you uh, move over to the um, switch number two, that's the AC input range. So if you're at position zero, it's gonna be 184 to 253 volts AC, or 100 to 135 volts AC. And if you swap over to position number one, you've got 140 volts to 270 volts AC, or 90 to 135 volts AC. And so now if you move down here to the power saver auto, which is switch three, uh, night charging function, if it's in position zero, or detect load per three seconds on position two. Switch number three is the operating frequency. So 50 hertz is position zero, or 60 hertz is position one. So we're definitely gonna to wanna to have that one on uh, position uh, one for uh, here in the US. And then last is the uh, switch five, which is battery AC priority, utility power, or battery priority. So uh, we're gonna be doing battery priority on that one. Let's go ahead and hook up some power to this unit and see it operate. I've got a lithium iron phosphate battery here. Now I know these cables are very much undersized for this 3000 watts. I'm only gonna be pulling a few watts out of a battery charger uh, and also we're gonna test out a light down here just to get some output. So uh, you would definitely want to make sure your cable size is appropriate. All right, so let's go ahead and make sure the unit is off. Now, sometimes when you plug up this kind of a unit, it will uh, give you a bit of a spark, but hopefully we won't see that today. Um, but just in case, I'm gonna stand off here to the side and uh, tap this to make sure. All right, a little tiny spark. Nothing too big, good. Now, let's go ahead and turn on the unit. I'm gonna do the power saver off. The battery's at 13.3, which is correct. I checked it with the multimeter before we started. It is set to 120 volts out and 60 hertz, as you can see right here, and it has zero load at the moment. So let's go ahead and plug this battery charger up. I do see a green light here on that ground fault. So let's plug that in, all right. Our light is here blinking, ready for this to be charged. Okay, let's see if we have any kind of load on this. Shouldn't be much, 4% on the load. Very cool, so that's working. Now that we've tested out the outlet and found it to work just fine, I have removed the cover here on the direct wire. This side over here is the input, so you've got ground, and then you've got your load or live right here, and then neutral, and then these three over here are ground, load, or live, and then neutral there. So I've got a 150 watt LED right here that I'm going to be using this inverter to power. Um, so I've uh, unplugged everything, turned it off, and let's go ahead and wire this up real quick. So we'll go ahead and do this. Get that locked down. And put the, the hot over here on this side. All right, there we go. There's no ground here, so I think we'll be fine, but uh, just for the fun of it, let's go ahead and get this connected as well. Plug the battery back up. So now we've got power. Let's go ahead and test out the two different modes, the power saver off and the power saver on. So let's go ahead and turn power saver off 
first, which we know when as soon as this kicks on, it will start producing light. There we go. That is 150 watts. Let me make sure it's the highest setting. Yeah, it is. All right, very cool. Let me find the load here. Only 6% there is what it's showing. All right, very cool. Now let's turn this off. Because this is gonna be pulling more than the 25 watts minimum, it should also kick on when the power saver auto is switched on over here. So let's give that a try. Give it a second. All right, I was having trouble getting the power saver auto feature to work. And I think the problem is I never did set dip switch number three down here to one. So let's flip that over to one. And now this thing should pulse whenever it is set to the power saver auto. Let's see if it makes a pulsing sound. It does, okay. Let me bring this mic down close and hopefully you can hear it. Yeah, I think you can. All right, so now that it's pulsing, I think this right here will pull more than 25 watts. Let's give it a try. Let's try and... Yes, okay, so that did pull it. Which means that um, you could be saving battery by pulsing the power on. And so as soon as it pulls a load that is 25 watts or more, it will uh, start charging uh, or having an output at full power. So uh, you can see up here again, 4% on the load. Uh, battery is 12.7. Uh, so as soon as I uh, pull this out, that should go back to the pulsing mode again. Yep, so it sure did. I'm not exactly sure how much that's going to save, but it should be significantly more than having this thing running all the time. Now that we've tested all of those features, let's go ahead and plug up the remote back here on this side. There we go. And so I've got this in the off position. And now the switch hopefully will allow us to do uh, power saver off like that. And it does uh, turn the unit on. So that is now working as it should. And then we can turn the unit back to off here and then do the power saver auto. And once again, it has turned this on as it should. So the remote is uh, super simple. And it's basically just the same thing as the one built into the unit here. Now, uh, I don't currently have anything out here in the studio to test out the charging method, um, but we may come back and do that a little bit later. That completes the basic look of the inverter function of this unit. Now, of course, it has a auto generator start and also the charger in here. So if you plug up on the uh, input side over here, 120 volts, 60 hertz, then it will charge that lithium iron phosphate battery as long as I set this dial to the right setting. But for now, we're just gonna stop right here. Uh, this booklet does have a ton of information in it. Uh, definitely um, read that whenever you uh, pick this up. If you want to find some more information on this unit, I have links in the description down below that are very helpful. Um, the Amazon page and the uh, Sun Gold Power website as well. Um, so be sure to subscribe so you can be notified whenever I install this out in my tiny house and we will hook up the uh, solar panels, charge controller and battery and then have this unit power that little place. So I uh, hope you'll enjoy watching that. I'm Seth with Land House and I will see you in the next video. Bye.